Homo sapiens, welcome to the third episode of Parse This Paper with Parman. In this series, I pick an interesting paper, give you the background knowledge needed to understand it, and then go through the paper itself. Today, we'll be taking a look at a viewpoint article written by me titled Combining Senolytics and Cell Therapy for the Treatment of Parkinson's Disease. Though it isn't published in a journal, it's all based on published literature and you can find a link to all those references in the description box down below. You can also find the paper itself there. Uh, before we begin, I just want to mention that this video is purely educational and shouldn't be taken as medical advice. Now without further ado, let's take a look at some of the background needed to understand what we'll discuss later on. Parkinson's is a growing disease, and over 10 million people globally suffer from it and its host of devastating signs and symptoms. These include impaired motor movement, weakened cognitive abilities, rigidity, tremors, and emotional changes, just to name a few. So what causes Parkinson's? The loss of a certain type of neuron in a certain region of the brain. To help us get a bit more specific than that, here's a model of a brain. Don't worry, we don't need to know about all of these different sections of the brain, and we'll only focus on those involved in Parkinson's. All we need to know about the forebrain, which is located around here, is that it's involved in voluntary movements and, more specifically, contains the motor cortex which we're interested in. Now, what's very important for us in Parkinson's is the basal ganglia, located right around here. Let's zoom in a bit closer and get a good look at the mechanism at play in Parkinson's. Now, we're zoomed into the basal ganglia. Here's where I want you to meet a few other structures that are important. First up is the substantia nigra. We'll focus specifically on this part of the structure called the substantia nigra pars compacta. Substantia nigra directly translates to black substance because the area has a dark pigment that comes from the dopaminergic neurons in it. As the name suggests, these neurons produce dopamine, which is a big player in our movement. Next up, we'll jump over to the globus pilitis internus and globus pilitis externus, and then the striatum. Then, here we have the thalamus and the subthalamic nucleus. Together, these structures communicate with the motor cortex, which you may remember from before, as well as the more general region called the cerebral cortex. Through two pathways, known as the direct and indirect pathways, these structures interact to help us move. Let's say our goal is to kick a soccer ball into the net. In the direct pathway, first, our cerebral cortex would quote-unquote tell our basal ganglia, more specifically the striatum, that we want to achieve the school. From there, this signal would travel to the globus pilitis internus, then to the thalamus, and then the cerebral cortex once more. I've certainly simplified the process here, but here's the last thing you need to know about the direct pathway. It ultimately excites the cortex. In the indirect pathway, we once again receive a message from the cerebral cortex to the striatum. Then this message travels to the globus pilitis externus, then to the subthalamic nucleus, then to the globus pilitis internus, then to the thalamus, and ultimately the cerebral cortex again. And you need to know that the indirect pathway inhibits the cortex. Together, these two pathways help you kick that ball and score. The crowd goes wild. So what role does the substantia nigra pars compacta, or the SNPC, as I'll refer to it from now on, play in all of this? Its effect occurs through a pathway called the nigrostriatal pathway, which connects the substantia nigra and the striatum. This pathway affects both the direct and indirect pathways. The nigrostriatal pathway excites the direct pathway and inhibits the indirect pathway. 
since the direct pathway is excitatory on its own, the nigrostriatal pathway further excites the cortex. With the indirect pathway, since it normally inhibits, the nigrostriatal pathway is inhibiting that inhibition, and it results in exciting the cortex. Two negatives make a positive. Remember it like that. So ultimately, the nigrostriatal pathway and the dopaminergic neurons in the SNPC that help make this pathway possible are crucial in helping us move properly. Now with all of that out of the way, let's see what's damaged in Parkinson's disease. It's the critical dopaminergic neurons in the SNPC that we've been talking about. When the nigrostriatal pathway is no longer functioning properly, the balance between the direct and indirect pathways is tipped towards the indirect pathway, which inhibits movement, leading to many of the characteristic signs and symptoms of Parkinson's, such as slowness or absence of movement. So now that we understand the mechanism behind Parkinson's, we can finally look at treatments for it. Let's first briefly talk about some current conventional treatments to help us see why there's a need for novel therapies. Levodopa, or L-dopa, which is the precursor to dopamine, is considered the most effective, commonly used treatment at the moment. It does have quite a few side effects, as is the case with all medication, um, and these include dizziness, headaches, somnolence, and even more severe side effects like involuntary movements. Another issue is something called off times, where even though the patient is taking L-DOPA, the signs and symptoms of Parkinson's return. There are treatments that tackle these off times, but sometimes they have their own complications. As well, Parkinson's patients' quality of life continues to deteriorate over time, and there's not much L-DOPA can do about it. And now, let's take a look at the first novel therapy we'll be exploring, senolytics, small molecules that cause apoptosis in senescent cells. If you'd like to learn lots about senescence, you can check out my video on that topic right over there. But to briefly catch you up, a cell is called senescent when it's no longer multiplying, but is also not dying. Senescence is highly implicated in aging and age-related diseases, and in 2018, a paper published in Cell Reports found that there are senescent astrocytes in Parkinson's caused by Piriquat, which is a herbicide linked to sporadic or non-familial Parkinson's. But wait, what are astrocytes? Well, we've all heard of neurons, the brain cells that synapse and help us move, think, and do everything in between. But there are lots of other cells in the brain, such as astrocytes. Astrocytes are supporting brain cells, though some scientists say that calling them supporting may downplay their true importance. Back to the 2018 paper, when examining human samples of SNPC tissues, researchers found increased expression of P16, a marker of senescence. Further supporting this evidence, Lamin B1 was reduced in astrocytes in Parkinson's patients, another indicator of senescence. Tests in mice also supported the evidence that was found in vitro, or in the lab in culture. So this is quite interesting. We see that there's senescence in astrocytes in sporadic Parkinson's. But does it go farther than that? Is there senescence in neurons too? Well, some studies have found that neurons do indeed senesce as well. In particular, in a later 2019 study, researchers examined brain slices of sporadic Parkinson's patients and found that dopaminergic neurons could easily become senescent when the protein SATB1 was knocked out or removed but knocking out the same protein in a different region of the brain didn't result in senescence. Interestingly, when the same study looked at certain senolytics, they found that they were able to reduce the viability of senescent cells. And even more interestingly, dopaminergic neurons with an SATB1 knockout 
had reduced viability after treatment with these established senolytics. And so SATB1 itself could be a good treatment option to explore in the future. To sum things up, senescence seems to be a contributor to Parkinson's and certain senolytics um, can help to reduce the viability of these harmful senescent cells. You see, when a cell becomes senescent, it secretes um, a mixture of different factors called the senescence-associated secretory phenotype. And this mixture may then result in the senescence of more and more surrounding cells. So using senolytics may help stop the progression of Parkinson's, according to some of the studies we've looked at. But how about restoring function for Parkinson's patients? That's where our next treatment, a cell therapy, comes in. This therapy, called MSK DA01 cell therapy for advanced Parkinson's patients, is actually being tested for safety and tolerability in a phase one clinical trial right now. And that's happening in the US and in Canada. Alongside assessing for safety, the trial is also looking at whether motor function is improved as that's the primary goal of this treatment. So what is the treatment? It involves MSK DA01 or just DA01 cells which is a group of midbrain dopaminergic neurons intended for injection into the striatum, and more specifically, the putamen, which is a part of the striatum. Remember that the striatum is connected to the substantia nigra through the nigrostriatal pathway. By repairing this pathway, motor function could be improved. This injection is done using the Clearpoint Neuronavigation System. The injection is accurate but minimally invasive. Prior to the clinical trial, DA01 was tested in 44 Parkinsonian rats, which were split into a control group and a group receiving cell injections. Eight months after the injection, the DA01 group had a statistically significant decline in Parkinson's symptoms, while the control group saw an increase in these symptoms. As well, the company conducting this trial Blue Rock Therapeutics has tested the safety of these cells in several ways prior to the trial. For instance, the transplanted cells rarely traveled outside the brain in their rodent models, as cells traveling to unintended places is a very bad thing, and those that did travel outside could be explained by improper injection techniques. And those are the two treatments we'll be exploring today. Now, let's bring them together to see how they could possibly be used in the future. First, we'd administer the senolytics. This would result in the death of senescent cells, which we think, according to some studies, are causing the progression of Parkinson's, or rather a factor in the progression of Parkinson's disease. The next step would be to restore lost function. This is where DA01 would come in and it would help restore motor function. Put together, they could prevent the deterioration and possibly reverse the course of Parkinson's. Do keep in mind that this is all based on academic papers and a lot of it hasn't been tested out in clinical trials. One of them, as we discussed, is just being tested out. So this is just some of the theories that we currently have. And there you have it. The combining of senolytics and cell therapy for treating Parkinson's disease. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to check out the paper as well as all of my references in the description box down below. See you next time!